Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the weekend. Welcome to Friday, the 8th of March, 2024, to Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America and Cochise County, an LCMS Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation. I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation, and it's so good to be able to welcome you this morning worldwide, no matter where you're chiming in from. And so we thank you immensely for that. And so my brothers and sisters, as we begin the weekend, uh, uh, Sarah Young is going to share with us the subject of save your best striving for seeking my face. That's Jesus, Jesus' face. And then Dr. Martin Luther is going to be sharing with us, do not deceive yourself. So what does that have to do with us? Um, in, in the middle of this Lenten season on March the 8th, 2024. Stay tuned as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, today is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So during this time of Lent, we always want to remind ourselves that we are to return to the Lord our God, for he's gracious and he's very merciful. He is slow to anger and he is abounding in steadfast love and he repents of evil. Jesus said this, though. He said, if any man would follow him after him, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and then follow him. Unfortunately, We don't want to do that, but we need to, okay? So then Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's why we need to follow him, because without him we're lost, okay? So from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is our strength, and he is our song, and he has become our salvation. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation, and we will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, and proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. So sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth, and shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is our strength and our song, and he has become our salvation. So Sarah Young is going to talk to us this morning where Jesus says, Save your best striving for seeking my face. I am constantly communicating with you. To find me and to hear my voice, you must seek me above all else. Anything that you desire more than me becomes an idol. And America has a plethora of idols more than probably any other country in the world. America is an idolatrous country, very much so, because of its prosperity. All right? So when you are determined to get your own way, you blot me out of your consciousness. Instead of single-mindedly pursuing some goal, talk with me about it. Let the light of my presence shine on this pursuit so that you can see it from my perspective. If the goal fits into my plans for you, I will help you reach it. If it is contrary to my will for you, I will gradually change the desire of your heart. Seek me first and foremost, then the rest of your life will fall into place piece by piece. We need to do that, people, intentionally, okay? But then Dr. Martin Luther is going to share with us, do not deceive yourself. Unfortunately, we are deceived. We are, we, we, we are bombarded with deception, and we buy into it. And so Martin Luther says, do not deceive yourself. And the passage of Scripture is that of St. Paul's letter to the Christian church at Galatia 
in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And we have this recording. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So no one should deceive himself. Well, that would be, you know, we would probably agree with that, you know. But listen to the ramifications. Whoever belongs to Christ, says St. Paul, crucifies the flesh with all its diseases and faults. This takes place when they not only repress the wantonness of the flesh by fasting or other kinds of discipline, but when, as St. Paul said earlier, Galatians 5.16, they walk by the Spirit. That is, when the threat that God will punish sin severely warns them and frightens them away from sinning, and when, instructed by the word, by faith, and by prayer, they refuse to yield to the desires of the flesh, dressed in the armor of God with faith, hope, and the sword of the Spirit, Ephesians 6, 11 through 17, they then fight back at the flesh, and with these nails they fasten it to the cross, so that against its will it is forced to be subject to the Spirit. Eventually, when they die, they will put it off completely, and in the resurrection they will have a flesh that is pure, without any passions or evil desires. You see, God in Jesus Christ takes pleasure in us striving. You know, I, I, I you know, we're going to recite. You know, we recite the Ten Commandments, and people uh, want to push back on me and say, "Well, we're under grace," so they look at the Ten Commandments as well, I don't need to be concerned about that. Oh, yes, you do. Just because we walk in this canopy of grace doesn't excuse or eliminate the Ten Commandments. Jesus, when he came here, he said, I did not come here to abolish the law like you guys are resonating and opinionating and, and, and verbalizing. He said, I didn't do that. I did not come to, to, to abolish the Ten Commandments. But he said, I came to fulfill them. So he still expects us to abide by them, knowing full well that we're going to fail. But he gets pleasure in us striving to keep them. So if God gets pleasure, then we do them. Period. Who cares what your opinion is? Doesn't mean anything anyway. All right? So, you know, let's cut out the nonsense, you know? So, do not be deceived. Don't deceive yourself. All right? So this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in light of all of this that has been said already, we are reminded during this time of Lent that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. What is an advocate? An advocate is like a lawyer. You know, if you can go into a courtroom, you can represent yourself. No kidding. I'd be, I was in the legal field before I got in the ministry, so I know all this. And I did all this. So you can represent yourself. Not a good advice because you better know the law inwards, outwards, backwards, and inside out and everything else, but you don't. So you're running a tremendous risk by doing that. But that's your choice, all right? But it's best to have an advocate, a good lawyer. <laughs> and I work for one. Okay, good one. And I know a lot of good ones in, 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 in where I'm at. All right? So it's good to have a good lawyer. An advocate, and we do, Jesus Christ. An advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Why? Because he was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Took our place. <laughs> so that we don't have to. <laughs> you know, that's the great thing. All right. So blessed is the one whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Our sins are all covered with the blood of Christ. So when God the Father looks at us, he doesn't see us in our sinfulness. He sees us clothed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And he says, that's perfect. I take that. But if you're not trusting in just Jesus, you're in trouble. Because he's just seeing all your sin. And he doesn't take sinners to heaven. Make no mistake about that. He only takes perfect people. So you got to be perfect. And if you're not trusting Jesus, you're not. You won't be there. It doesn't matter what your background is, how you've been raised, anything about you. Period. All right. You find that offensive? <laughs> That's your problem. That's what Jesus says in his word, the Bible. All right. So we, so we rejoice. Why? Because we have an advocate with the Father. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ, the righteous one. We don't have to worry about that because we've got Jesus, an advocate with the Father. He represents us constantly, minute by minute, second by second. Right? So he was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people, ours. Right? That's good stuff. So my brothers and sisters, we profess the Christian faith and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, so together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation and for our cities and communities and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. So finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. One God, now and forever. So blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue to pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, again, thank you for beginning your weekend with us this morning. To peace through the word, I pray that it has blessed you, inspired you, encouraged you, and given you genuine real peace today. So I convey all of our Lord's blessings to you in abundance and wish you all tremendous blue skies. <laughs>